Hi again, everyone. I'm Scott Douglas with Army Armstrong in Memphis, Tennessee at the Mid-South Coliseum. We'll see highlights from two nights of racing in Memphis on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. The most popular truck in the world, the awesome Gravedigger, opens things up here on ESPN. He's matched up with the Outlaw Ford first round elimination action. And the win to Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger. Like 1989, the Digger is getting off to a good start in 1990. Dennis Anderson with a first-round victory goes to the quarterfinals, but right now he's going to spend a minute with Army Armstrong after a victory over the Outlaw. Well, as we go around the country, this is one of the trucks that everybody wants to see. Dennis, it's looking good so far. What do you got to say? Yeah, it's looking pretty good so far, but we got a lot of tough competition here. All I can say is I got to try to knock them down. The one he's got to try to knock down is the Bigfoot Ford. Bigfoot number eight out of the Bob Chandler stable. And look at Digger as it, it almost appeared Dennis Anderson went after Andy Brass and Bigfoot. Foot gets the victory, hard earned over Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger as Bigfoot has been the story. Brand new suspension after sitting out a year just to work on this truck. He's back. The other trucks aren't wild about having to run against all his research and development, but right now the Ford is looking strong despite the fact that he was unable to beat Equalizer last week. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when you're on top, there's only one place to go, buddy, and everybody's trying to knock you down this thing any way they can. Anderson gave you a handful right there. That's right. Dennis did give a good run, but the Ford Bigfoot, you know, we've been after the Chevy Digger for a long time and finally come around to where we got him. Well, the, the vehicle seemed to go decently well for you, but Anderson had his hands full. He was all over the place. Are you aware of him being in trouble on a run like that, or are you too busy just driving your truck? Well, I kind of caught Dennis in the, in the side mirror there once, and I seen him coming over. I knew he was going to hit the hill hard. He, Dennis's truck, he's known to be squirrely, so I... He, you know, figuring he'd hit the hill hard, he's going to be out of control a little bit. We just tried to run a straight race. I seen him, and also I tried to hang off to my left side a little bit to keep him hitting me. Here's something you're going to like. We listened as Army talked to Scott Stevens at King Crunch. New York, buddy. He's stalking you in that door. He's got blood in his eyes. How are you going to handle him? It's going to be tough. He's going to be the toughest race he's had all as you're hearing him getting ready to go up against John Kwasniewski and the Buffalo Tremor Chevrolet action in Memphis, Tennessee. Really neat to be able to get a perspective on what the driver is thinking as he goes racing. There you look at Scott Stevens, and we're going to go back and listen to his comments over the radio as this race begins. First of all, oh yeah, you know I thought it was going to be a bad ride, but you know truck did okay. But the chassis just separated and it rolled back on you, or what? Yeah, the front leaf spring just broke, and when it broke, it just let the front end roll out from under the truck. This means we're going to be seeing a new King Crunch truck, or what? Oh, it's not hurt that bad. It, you know, might be running them, you know, next week for sure. And, You're the guy that said they're going to be building them like sprint cars, going to tear them up, put them all right back together. Is that the philosophy you're using on this? The bad thing about it, we got all our springs just freshened up for Houston in two weeks, and they're at home, so we'll have to have them flown up here for in the next race, but we'll be all right. 
Scott Stevens' comment after a scary ride in King Crunch. Our next quarterfinal round matchup in Memphis, Tennessee will be coming out as you survey the damage done to the truck out of Woodlands, Texas. Of course, Scott Stevens did one of the most violent flips of 1989 up at Kalamazoo, Michigan, and was able to come back. He'll not be back from this one for at least a week. All right, let's go to action with Awesome Kong and USA One. The Texas truck, Awesome Kong on the right of the screen, on the left, the 1988 world champion, USA One, with the new driver, Steve Wilkie. And the win goes to Awesome Kong. Steve Kane, out of Colleen, Texas, moves in to the semifinal round at Memphis, Tennessee. So Kong looking good, Wilkie looking better every week in USA One. On the replay, you'll see that Kong's got the better of it. And I'll tell you, Wilkie looks better every week. That was a nice, smooth ride, just not quite enough to get with Big Awesome Kong. Coming up next now, our matchup in the quarterfinal will be a rematch of the big rivalry from 1989. The world champion equalizer against the runner-up from 1989 in the world points chase, Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. He's out of Waysboro, North Carolina. There's David Morris, last year's driver of the year, rookie of the year, and world champion out of Springfield, Tennessee. Equalizer and Crusher head-to-head. -head, they really came out close to even. Equalizer had a little bit the better of it head-to-head -head in 1989. But Equalizer is freshened up for 1990. Porter's still running his old truck from 89 while he is building a new truck that'll be ready in a couple of months to run for the world title this year. Here they go. Give it to Equalizer as David Morris gets the victory and a spot in the semifinals in Memphis, Tennessee. When we return, highlights from the semifinals and finals as our coverage of the first two nights of racing in Memphis, Tennessee continues on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. ESPN's coverage of the superstars of monster truck racing on the TNT World Championship Challenge. It's Bigfoot beating Buffalo Trevor in the semifinals. So Bigfoot for the second week in a row and for the second week out on the TNT Tour for 1990 is in the final. We noticed a popping sound on Bigfoot, but it didn't seem to slow the big board down any. Army Armstrong working his way over to talk to Andy Brass about that win. Andy, when the truck comes right across the finish line, it's making a pop and sound. What is that? Well, a lot of it is we're hitting up against our rev limiter, you know, which when it does, it just it, it starts cutting out the cylinders and then it backfires. So it just, it just actually stops the engine or hesitates it just for a second and lets it come back to life? Yes, it does. That way it keeps us like if we put a button in, you know, say a 6,500 RPM button, it won't let the motor get over 6,500. It, it, what it is is more like a safety factor keeping our motors together. The Bigfoot Ford is into the Monster Smash Final. The opponent will be either Awesome Kong or Equalizer. Steve Kane and Awesome Kong, David Morris in the Equalizer, two big bad Chevys side by side for a berth in the Monster Smash Final. The Equalizer and David Morris, the truck built and owned by Gary Cook out of Springfield, Tennessee. So, another shot for Equalizer at Bigfoot. Last week here on ESPN, Equalizer beat the new Bigfoot truck. Can he do it again? He's looking awfully good. Army Armstrong standing by with David Morris to talk about that subject. The Monster Smash Final against All Bigfoot. All right, Dave, you're going to the finals, baby. This is just nothing but an old-time street fight. You pull the gloves off, you go after each other, no love lost. And I know one thing for sure. He doesn't want you to beat him two weeks in a row, and he told me anything he's got to do to beat you, that's what he's going to do. Well, I'm going to make him push his truck to the limit because uh, I'm going to be run the equalizer. I'm going to run it just as hard as it'll go. So maybe I can hang in there and take a win. Everybody has talked about the return of Bigfoot, the new suspension, and how dominant they expect the truck to be. There is no question that Equalizer is every bit the equal of Bigfoot, at least during their first matchup. Oh, Equalizer with a whole shot on Bigfoot. Equalizer clearly beats him across the finish line, but the word from the TNT officials is they're going to disqualify Equalizer. The track officials are saying that Equalizer has jumped the start. Let's watch it. Watch the red light watch equalizer oh my is that a close call they're saying that equalizer jumped the start here's another angle on another camera 
I, I'll tell you, friends, I don't buy it. I thought it was a good start for Equalizer, but it's not our call to make in the TV booth. The call is made by the TNT officials. They are saying Equalizer jumped this start, and because that's the call, the victory goes to Andy Brass and Bigfoot. Wow, what a controversial ending. Army's got both drivers. Andy, any win's a good win. Congratulations to you on this one. The General Tire Bigfoot really looked good tonight. Yes, it did. The truck was running real well tonight. You know, like I say, the win was a good win. I think Dave got it off, uh, jumped the light a little bit and was red-lighted, but I figured we only might as well push it. They might not catch it, so we went for it anyway. When you're as quick as you are, you know these guys are going to be doing that, right? That's right. You know, everybody's coming up against us now. They're really they're having to push their trucks hard. We've been running pretty hard with the truck. It's, I don't think the truck's up to full capacity yet. But it's, it's running well. Okay, we're going to see you in just a minute. Right now, I need to get David in here. David, congratulations on a job well done. These people were really, really behind you. And really, I think you did the only thing you could do, babe. You just went for his throat. Yeah. I got a little over anxious up there, they said, on the line. And said I was, uh, left a little bit too quick. But I was ready to go. And <laughs> I wasn't ready to wait. The 1990 score between Equalizer and Bigfoot was one to one at that point. Going into the final day at Memphis, we look for a tiebreaker, and you'll see it next. Scott Douglas and Army Armstrong back with you from Memphis, Tennessee, the Mid-South Coliseum, the third and final day on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge in Memphis opens up with USA 1 against Grave Digger. Now the Digger, despite the fact that Dennis Anderson said everything's going great when he's got those red lights on, he's smoking out of one cylinder. He's only running off seven cylinders. He'll be able to race, but there may be an upset in the making as Steve Wilkie's USA 1 has been looking better and better every race. We were wondering if an upset was coming up. It was. Grave Digger and USA 1. kind of dug the nose in, but when he did, he stayed full throttle. It gave him more traction, and he gets the win over a crippled grave digger. Anderson still ran it hard, ran it as strong as he could, but going on only seven cylinders at this level is not going to put you in the winner's circle. Steve Wilkie wins it in USA 1, and Army standing by to talk to him. All right, Steve Wilkie, I can tell you're pumped. Everybody in Memphis is pumped, but that was better than a blue ticket ride at Disney World, son. You should have seen a look on your face. Yeah, that's, it feels good. Uh, Digger's beating me up all year, and uh, I finally put down a 409, which is what we were trying to do all weekend. Uh, it felt really good, a little nose over in the cars, but if that's what it takes, that's what we're here for. Hang in there. We'll see you next time around. All right. In the quarterfinals, USA 1 came back against Buffalo Tremor. This will be a wild ride, and we're going to take you in the cockpit with Steve Wilkie. You're inside the True Value USA 1 with Wilkie. We'll look at that angle on the replay. The race went to USA 1 in a wild ride. Again, he almost nosed over. Same thing for Buffalo Tremor as Tremor got up on the front wheels. Gave it some gas and was able to come out of it. Inside the cab with USA 1, you take the wild ride with Steve Wilkie. But it's a winning wild ride for the driver from Spring Lake Park, Minnesota. Once again, it's Steve Wilkie's USA 1 with the victory over the Buffalo Tremor and John Kwasniewski out of the Buffalo, New York area. And boy, you could really see on that replay, both trucks nosedive, but by staying in the throttle, they were able to keep maximum traction on those front wheels, and both trucks had excellent runs. USA 1 was just a little bit better. Steve Wilkie and USA 1 excited about that win, and Wilkie had to fill in the big, big shoes of Rod Litzow, who drove that truck, the USA 1 truck, to a world championship for Everett Jasper in 1988, and was very successful in 89. Wilkie has started slow, but he has really come on strong, and every week, more and more confident, and a little wilder ride each time. He's in the semifinals today. Here's a quarterfinal matchup. It's all Carolina Crusher, as Gary Porter out of Wadesboro, North Carolina, beats the out Law Ford and Mike Wine. And I'm going to tell you, watch the Carolina Crusher in 1990, because right now he's hanging in there with the better trucks. And later this year, he'll have a brand new ride. The semifinals are up next on ESPN. Tracks in the GMT Monster Truck Challenge. Mid-South Coliseum, Memphis, Tennessee. Our second night of coverage this week. It's Bigfoot against USA 1. And Bigfoot.
what wins it? A wild ride. Steve Wilkie barely gets it shut down just before the wall in the Memphis Mid-South Coliseum. We have talked here on ESPN about the fact that Wilkie's a new driver in USA 1. It's taking him a while. But here in this run, he really gives Bigfoot all he wants. This was the rivalry in monster truck racing. When it all started, USA 1 beat Bigfoot for the world title in 1988. Bigfoot took last year off and now has come back in 1990 with the better truck. But Steve Wilkie's gaining more experience and Everett Jasper's truck may be ready to challenge the foot once again with new driver Steve Wilkie. Well, that's the, the rear tire's hitting that first car again. She goes nose over, and uh, anytime you run against one of the foot trucks, uh, you got to lay it on the boards and hold it there. And uh, that's what we did. And she got a little squirrely, but you drive it out. So for the third straight time in Memphis, Bigfoot earns his way into the Monster Smash final. Will his opponent for the third straight time be Equalizer? We're going to let you see the semifinal race right here between David Morris and the Equalizer and his arch nemesis from 1989, the runner-up in the World Championship points race, Gary Porter, Carolina Crusher, out of Waynesboro, North Carolina. This was the big rivalry in 1989. It's renewed in 1990 with Equalizer battling Carolina Crusher. That was a suspension race, friends. Equalizer wins it with the softer suspension. Carolina Crusher's bounce coming over the hill cost him any chance to stick with David Morris's truck. Watch when Crusher comes over the hill. It looks like he's on a trampoline as he bounces straight up while Equalizer goes straight ahead. Straight ahead to a matchup with Bigfoot. Who's it gonna be? Well, I hope it's gonna be the Equalizer. I'm gonna uh, run, this next race is gonna be really wild, I can tell you that. This is what they came to see in Memphis, Tennessee. Bigfoot Ford, Equalizer Chevrolet, the Monster Smash Final. Oh, who won it? That's the question on everybody's mind in Memphis. Did the Ford win it, or did Equalizer beat Bigfoot again? Now remember, this is the third time these two trucks have matched up. Bigfoot is supposed to be the superior truck, the truck of the 90s. But note, in three races in Memphis, Bigfoot has not finished ahead of Equalizer yet, or has he? They still have not called a winner to this race. Week number one, Equalizer beat Bigfoot. Week number two, Equalizer was called for jumping the start, a questionable call, so he was DQ'd. They handed the win to Bigfoot. This is matchup number three, and so far, nobody's been able to determine a winner. Andy Brass and Bigfoot. David Morris and the Equalizer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when we started the show, we started exactly like we are right now, with these two guys literally in a toss-up for the national points lead. And we're still waiting to find out who is going to be the national points leader. They're rerunning the run right now. If you had to do it any different, what would you do right now, Andy? I don't think there'd be anything. You know, both of us run a good run. You know, I stayed in my lane, run consistent. Dave was running real well all night. So there ain't nothing really I would change. OK, we're going to bounce over to David here. You do anything different? Yeah, I'd have made sure I kept my foot down on the floor when I landed in between the cars and the dirt hill. I think I got off of it too much. Well, we're going to wait just a second. It looks like, boy, there's a strong possibility we actually may have a tie. Now, this has never happened before. If that's the case, they may have to go back to a qualifying time. I do not believe in this sport they're going to make them go and run these trucks over again. So sit tight. I'm sure we'll have some replays coming up. We're going to get with the officials. As soon as we do get the official word, we'll get back to you. Once again, watching the replay, Bigfoot and Equalizer, you can see him in midair. Now, the finish line is midway through the final car. Here, from this angle, it looked like Bigfoot had a slight edge. But on the timing tape, and the other thing to remember is that Bigfoot is airborne. Equalizer was staying down closer to the car. So on the TNT timing tape, they're virtually side by side. A dead heat. Let's listen to the conversation around the timing tape. Oh, <laughs> 
There you hear it from track announcer Butch Krieger, the first ever tie in the three-year history of racing on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. We'll be right back to try and determine a winner. the world title to USA One in 1988, then sat out most of last year while building a new truck. The drivers who did campaign last year are not too happy that Bigfoot gets to race after having all of that time to regroup. Well, it's sort of mixed feelings. Last year, he wouldn't come out and play with us, and this year, he's coming out and picking on us. And so he took a year off to, you know, to sort of regroup and build a new truck, and that's all he's doing is coming out and picking on us this year. But obviously has a definite advantage over any of us. Uh, he's had a lot of time to get his stuff together and come back out with a new truck. And I don't know, I guess I compare my truck. My truck's a couple years old and it's it's really out of his league, you know. So I don't know, all I can do is the best I can to beat him. I don't uh, think the design of the truck is, uh, is a problem. Uh, but it's they should have been out running with us uh, that in 1989. But uh, I don't know, what do you do about it? That's the politics. Well, I don't like it right now because Bigfoot's dominating, you know, but I don't know, you know, if, if I could do the same thing, I'd probably do it too, but I just, I don't think the suspension that he's running is fair to be running with lead spring trucks, and the reason I say that right now is because I can't afford his suspension that he's running. Candid comments from Dennis Anderson's grave digger trying to keep up with Bigfoot. But let it be known that a lot of these guys are building new trucks and by the middle of this year plan to be able to go tooth and nail with Bigfoot. I'll tell you, there's one guy who can go with him right now. That's David Morris and the Equalizer. And again, let me point out, as we rerun for the first time ever in TNT history, a Monster Smash final, that Bigfoot has still not crossed the finish line in front of Equalizer after three tries. This is going to be try number four. It's actually take two in this one event, the rerun of the Monster Smash final. Bigfoot and Equalizer to settle it in Memphis, Tennessee. Well, they'll either settle it or start a new argument. How can you get any closer than these two trucks have been in Memphis? Bigfoot and Equalizer, punch for punch, blow for blow, and race for race, it's been side by side. Here's the replay, the Bigfoot Ford, you can see him lunging, and this time by a half wheel length, the victory goes to Bigfoot. He has beaten the equalizer, Andy Brass in the winner's circle, Armies with him and Bigfoot owner Bob Chandler. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an all-American story right here. The man with the dream is on my right, Bob Chandler. The man that took the dream to the winner's circle today, Andy Brass, and Andy, it just did not come easy in Memphis, did it? No, it wasn't, you know. We would have to run a, run a dead heat there with him and then turn around running again. We knew we were just gonna have to push it, maybe pull the light a little bit. He's tough. Yes, he is. Uh, Dave's been running good all night. We've been watching these times. We was pulling 379. I don't know. Uh, maybe we were sleeping a little bit or something because we went down to a 382. We backed up a little bit. Well, congratulations to you and Bob Chandler. What can I say? You had the dream. You made it come true. And you told me earlier, this is just a taste of what monster truck racing's coming to. It's going to get bigger and better as the years go along, right? I'm sure it is. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of other guys building trucks like this. The suspension is the answer. Dave Morris runs suspension. Now, his truck is lighter. That's one of the reasons he's got the advantage here today. But uh, it's going to get better and better. It's going to be neat racing. So Bigfoot and Equalizer are established as the best two monster trucks early in 1990. But it's a long season on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. I'm Scott Douglas. Thanks for joining us.